Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the AUG, which I think could definitely be viable within the meta. I know some people used it when tournaments first rolled out and the Cold War integration happened. And that was even before people understood that the attachments made no sense at all and there could have been significantly better setups. Obviously, with the nerf to the DMR, it is still within the meta. It's definitely a higher skill gap now. But that opens the door for a ton of weapons. And people are going to start looking for the next best thing. And obviously, there's some main go-tos like the AMAC. Um, but I thought I'd kind of take a little bit of a look at the AUG and see how viable it is. And after looking at all the numbers, it seems like a pretty viable weapon um, and definitely could be in the meta under the right circumstances. And I'll go ahead and explain all that within the video, give you a best class setup. If you enjoy the video or learn something new, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're brand new, looking to find your way back, double check, make sure you are subscribed because there's currently 60% of you out there that are watching the videos but haven't yet subscribed. Um, let's go ahead and get into some of the different data. One of the interesting things with this weapon is normally I, I'm not a fan of burst weapons at all because there's a lot of RNG involved. And when I was looking at the different recoil patterns for this weapon, um, the, the, the recoil blot is fairly close together and that's with random assortment of attachments. We'll talk a little bit about which ones I think are better or worse. Um, even if it's negligible, I'll talk about those. But in general, I think one of the things that makes the AUG such a good weapon is the bullet spread is very tight. A lot of times they're going to be very close together, whereas the FR556, even though it does well at damage in terms of range, the bullets, you're lucky if you hit land one bullet and that's it. There's not going to be a second bullet landing just because the recoil spread is so much. And then another thing that the AUG has going for it um, is that it doesn't look like it has a damage drop off. So within its effective range, and when I'm saying effective range in this particular case, I mean that where you're going to be able to consistently hit shots because of the bullet velocity. Um, that is one of its weaknesses, um, but we'll go through that. So in terms of damage, this is kind of a weird damage profile where it does 40 to the limbs, stomach, and upper torso, no matter the distance. It always does 40. That's what I was able to test, and, and pretty much I couldn't go far enough. I went to like 90 meters, still was doing 40 to the body, which makes absolutely no sense. But when it comes to the headshot, it has a damage drop off right around between 25 to probably around 35 meters, somewhere in that gap. Um, there's a drop off where it, it drops from 72 headshot down to 71, which makes absolutely no difference. The number of shots to kill is uh, seven if you don't land a single headshot. Even if you mix in one headshot into the mix, it's gonna bring the shots to kill down to six, which is relatively manageable. That means it's gonna be two bursts to kill at any range, as long as you get one headshot and all the bullets register. Uh, obviously that's a little less practical. So if you get a, where you get lucky enough to get all three bullets to go to the head because the burst is that close, um, it, it'll be four shots to kill. So that next bullet that hits, no matter where it hits on the enemy, it'll be an insta kill. So you can maybe get two headshots in a body, one headshot, and, and that'd be the end of it. That'd be over. That person's done. Um, and the TTK on that is very fast. If you get the most optimal TTK, it would be around 350 milliseconds. Um, the, the most common is probably gonna be around 439. Um, and I get that number from basically getting the rate of fire within the burst and then burst delay and then factor how many bursts are required for that number of shots so in this particular case the base rate of fire for the weapon is right around 500 that's what the the game will say like in the stats if we had stats it would say 500 but once you start factoring in the burst delay um and the actual burst the actual burst comes out those three bullet bursts around 1200 rpm which is incredibly fast that's faster um, than we saw with the mac 10 or we see with the mac 10 uh, which is closer to 1100 so on top of that um, you have a burst delay that is approximately 234 milliseconds so every time you pull the trigger the burst comes out and before the next burst can be fired there's a 234 millisecond delay which gets added into the time to kill so if you're not killing them in two bursts um, the, the time to kill jumps up dramatically. Uh, in this particular case, if it was requiring another set of shots, uh, the TTK for the seven shots to kill, if you're not getting at least one headshot, is 700, which is still pretty competitive, but that means that the, you're only killing in three bursts. You're not firing a fourth burst. If you get a fourth burst into the mix, um, it's going to jump up that TTK over 1,000, and that's not competitive at all. Um, so if you need four bursts to kill, this gun sucks. If you need three or less, it's competitive. If you can get it to two, this thing is 
it dumpsters people. And with stopping power, it still holds its tight range. And since the damage drop offs aren't there, this thing will delete people pretty quickly. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that you kind of got to play with it a little bit, get a feel for it. Um, because its base bullet velocity is around 350, which is terrible. Um, but once you start stacking on attachments, you can maximize that number. And one of the ways that I did that in, in, you know, in the gameplay, and I was kind of experimenting with attachments, sometimes that's what I have in the background. Maybe I mix stuff up. Um, use the titanium barrel. It's backwards on this gun as well. It's going to bump up your bullet velocity by double. So it takes it from about 350 up to over 700. Um, and then the agency suppressor is how you can get about 7 or 8% more bullet velocity. So not a lot, but it is enough where it's going to allow your bullets to stay a little bit tighter, uh, especially within about 50 meters. So once you get around 45, 50 meters, starts dropping off. It gets a little bit harder, still possible, so it'll help out with that. But we'll talk a little bit about barrels and recoil in, in a sec as well. So, titanium barrel agency suppressor are good options, just like we had with the DMR, because the titanium, regardless of what it says, it's not working properly. The bonus of the titanium is it's gonna increase your rate of fire by about 14%, um, and it cuts down on the, the delay between shots by 7%. So overall, it bumps up your average rate of fire to 568, um, and then we end up having the burst around 1350, which is huge, just like a Diamati burst, fast. Um, and then that burst delay cuts it down. So you actually end up with a pretty good rate of fire in terms of the, the TTK. And so when I was talking about recoil patterns, I wanted to show that to you guys because it's very weird. I basically went and shot the target right here and I went through and I shot the various, I shot the wall. So you'll be able to see the, how I did this here. I would shoot empty spots since you're literally, even when you spam it, the, the recoil is very manageable. You're not going to really run into issues where you have to like adjust significantly. But right here, pretty much this is what the testing I did for each of the barrels and each of the, the grips and each of the other things. So we're going to talk about that. That's basically what I'm doing and see the consistency of the spread. And if I saw a pattern where they were very close four times in a row, obviously that leads to more consistency than the, the ones that spread out regardless of what the attachments say. So I pretty much went through all the various attachments, kind of give you an idea of what each one does. And we'll go through them as we go through the loadout so you have a better idea of what the attachments are actually doing. And obviously you can go out there and try them out for yourself. So we'll go ahead and look at the loadouts right now. So we'll start off with the muzzle and we have the muzzle brake, which it does look like it helps a little bit. Uh, regardless of what it says it does, it helps out a little bit. Um, looks like the flash guard did nothing. Uh, looks like the silencer did nothing in terms of the actual recoil spread. Infantry compensator, I didn't really feel like it helped out a little bit, maybe a hair. Um, SOCOM eliminator looked like it helped and so did the agency suppressor. But I think the agency suppressor is a little bit more of a, one of those things where it's kind of giving you a false positive because the bullets are traveling faster so it impacts, it has less chance to spread. So that might throw off the testing a little bit, but both of these seem like they did a good job uh, in helping out a little bit along with the muzzle brake. Uh, when it comes to the individual barrels, we've already kind of talked about it. Um, the titanium barrel is going to give you the faster fire rate and it's going to help out with the bullet velocity, which it does get helped out on these other categories. It's just not nearly as much. Um, and the, the bullet velocity, the gun's almost useless without that. So hopefully they get it all situated. So these actually do what they're supposed to. Um, because even in Cold War, there's not really a bullet velocity option um, besides the task force barrel. Um, and that's the one I normally run in Cold War, but this one, it doesn't make as much sense because the, you're not really getting positives out of it because the bullet velocity isn't as good um, as the, the titanium. Um, and then we have the underbarrels, and I went through and did all the underbarrels, and I went through and did all the underbarrels. The front grip looks like it helps a, ha a hair. Uh, infiltrator grip, it looks like it does help as well. Patrol grip didn't look like it helped out at all. The bruiser grip, a hair um field agent grip it did did help out so that's kind of what i ended up using um as you know you go on that's kind of one of the ones that actually works i think with the tactical rifles it works with other guns it, it's inconsistent that's the problem with this game currently is none of the attachments line up the class setup i would run is i'd obviously run a suppressor you could run the socom eliminator either of these are going to be good um obviously this one says it's helping out control a lot um but you kind of got to get a feel for them most people are going to run a suppressor so that's kind of why that one is a good option then the titanium 
the underbarrel field agent grip. For the magazine, I went up with the 45 round speed mag and that seemed like a decent option. I went the 45 round speed mag, it seemed like a decent option. Uh, obviously with all of these, I didn't test every in individual nuance. I just went a little bit based off feel until they actually fix some of these things. Then I can actually go in and actually blot them into my charts and all the different stuff so I know everything they do. Because at this point, it's like you could spend hours testing and then tomorrow they come out with the patch that's literally going to change it all. And that was a complete waste of time. So kind of got to go a little bit based off feel a little bit and then you could put on an optic. So personally, I've been mixing it up. I like the 2X and the 3X. It's just a matter of preference on how much zoom you want. Obviously, if you want this thing to be used at range, it's going to be a little bit less competitive um, at really, really far range. So you just got to choose your engagements wisely. You can't just choose to take someone off a heady off 100 meters. It's not very likely that that is going to be the case with this weapon. That is one of the true weaknesses is taking people off head glitches with burst weapons. Um, so if you really want to keep it in check, the 2X will kind of keep it so that you're not going to even aim at people you can't hit. Um, so it's kind of one of those things there. And that's pretty much it. That's the bait, straightforward class setup. Obviously, you can mix and match uh, what you want based off what I said. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy the video, learned something new. If you did, please do me a favor. Hit that like button if you're brand new want to find your way back. Double check. Make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.